Hi, this is Justin Coletti. You may know me from Sonic Scoop, but today I'm in the Plugin Alliance channel where we are going deep on opto or optical compressors. Opto compressors are some of the first compressors ever made popular in the world of music production. The most iconic Big Mac Daddy of them all was the original LA-2A style compressor, but there have been so many iterations of them since, and there are several of them in the Plugin Alliance Mega Subscription Bundle. We're in a series right now where we're taking a look at all of the different compressors in Plugin Alliance's Mega Subscription Bundle and trying to figure out why you would choose each of them, which kinds of instruments and sound sources each one of them is going to sound best on, how to get the most out of them. We've done an overview video on the major types of compressors, VCA, Opto, FET, Varimu, tube compressors, and now we're going really deep just on these optical compressors. I've got three of the fundamental opto compressors in the Mega Subscription Bundle pulled up right here in my DAW. They are the Acme Audio Opticom model XLA3, the BX Opto from Brainworks, and the Millennia Twincom model TCL2. Each of these three optical compressors has a slightly different signature tone. And though you could use each of them just about anywhere, there are certain areas where this type of compressor is really going to excel and a few things that make each of these unique. Right out of the gate, what makes an opto compressor an opto compressor is that it has a photosensitive cell inside that handles all the compression. A lot of the most popular and most famous opto compressors of all time have a tube circuit in them, but it's not actually the tubes doing the compression. It is this photosensitive cell. Inside a hardware opto compressor, there is actually like a little literal light bulb in there that glows brighter and brighter as the signal increases in intensity. And this photoreceptive cell senses the light coming from that little light bulb inside the compressor. And due to the unique characteristics of that photoreceptive cell, you get a specific and distinctive set of attack times, release times, threshold, and ratio, all of which are basically fixed but program dependent on a traditional old school optical compressor. These types of compressors tend to have a softer knee and by default tend to have a slightly, maybe on the slower side of attack times. But where these options are totally fixed on the earliest examples of optical compressors, all the hardware modeled by Plugin Alliance and Brainworks for the Mega Subscription Bundle add a little bit of extra flexibility where you can tailor that attack and release time a little bit more, and in some cases where you can tailor that ratio a little bit more too. Let's take a look at each of them in a little bit more detail and then hear them back to back. First up is the Acme Audio Opticom model XLA3. And this is one of my all-time personal favorites in the Plugin Alliance family. It has a lot of character. Like some of the original opto compressors, this one models a tube circuit, which has a good amount of character and honestly gets a healthy amount of grit and hair as you start to push it. You can even operate this compressor in a non-compressing mode where you just take advantage of the built-in box tone and mojo and color of this compressor by driving it just like a tube line amp. Like most vintage style optical compressors, it is primarily driven by two knobs, in this case, an input and output gain knob. Turning up the input drives more gain into the threshold, thereby giving you more compression. And then you just turn down the output gain to compensate. But a welcome additional feature here is the ability to change between slow, normal, and fast modes of operation, where you can speed up or slow down the overall attack and release times. The availability of this fast response mode makes it much more useful on things like acoustic guitar, drums, and other percussive elements where you might want to catch some more of the peaks. While on the other hand, the slow mode can allow even more of that initial impact to get through the compressor. However, there are going to be other cases where you want a little bit less of that tube style saturation out of your opto compressor. And in that case, our next compressor, the BX Opto, is a great one to look at. The BX Opto is also a vintage style optical compressor, but it has a little bit less of that grit and saturation that you get out of the Acme Audio Opticom. It's just a little bit smoother and warmer and more forgiving sounding to my ear. 
And when you want some natural, supple, warm, optical-style compression, without excessive amounts of added character, the BX Opto is a great way to go. It's just really smooth and really easy to use. Again, very simple two-knob operation. You've got this peak reduction knob here on the left. Turn this up and you'll get more compression out of it. And then you can again compensate by turning up your output gain a little bit. A really fun feature here is this totally variable speed knob where you can bias the entire compressor towards slower or faster attack and release times. And there's a built-in side chain. So you can make this compressor ignore the low frequencies, ignore the highs, or focus in on a specific area within the mid-range. And you've also got this super useful mix knob, so you can feel free to go ahead and dial in way too much opto compression, and then just back off a little bit using that mix control. Really simple, easy way to work. You can use this thing in so many places, and it's one of my favorite opto compressors out there in plug-in form. And finally, we've got the TwinCom from Millennia Music and Media Systems and Brainworks. And the TwinCom is called the TwinCom because it's modeled after a super high-end analog boutique compressor that has two different signal paths in it. There's both a tube signal path and a solid state JFET signal path. But whether you have this thing in tube or solid state mode, it's a pretty clean sounding opto compressor. And I'd say it's capable of being the cleanest and most transparent out of all three of these optical compressors. And you can use it in more places than any of these other optical compressors because it has the most flexibility and variability in your attack settings, your release settings, and your ratio. The attack goes all the way from a pretty fast 2 milliseconds to an exceptionally slow 100 milliseconds. The release goes from a super fast 0.1 second all the way to a super slow 3 seconds. And the ratio is fully variable from 2 to 1 all the way up to 30 to 1. This makes it a compressor that you can use in probably more places than any other optical compressor out there. In addition to these three primary opto compressors inside the Mega Subscription Bundle, there's also two more plugins that have a type of optical compression built into them. There's the Shadow Hills Mastering Compressor that has both a discrete VCA compressor section as well as an optical compressor section. And there's the Lisa from Tomo Audio Labs that's a dynamic EQ with multiple bands of opto compression built in that you control like an EQ. Those are also super cool, but for today's deep dive, we're going to focus primarily on these three fundamental opto compressors. I've got a great track pulled up here from an artist and client of mine named Taylor Bloom. This one is produced by Joshua Lee Turner, also a friend, a client of mine, and a great artist in his own right. I picked this track because it has a lot of natural, organic elements in it. Real electric guitars, acoustic guitars, basses, drums, vocals, with a somewhat minimalist production aesthetic. The exact kinds of places where you're most likely to use an opto compressor as your primary compressor. Of course, you can use optical compressors too on all sorts of more modern genres like hip hop, electronica, EDM, heavy metal, and everything in between. On some of those more modern hyper processed styles of music, you're a little more likely to use an optical compressor in conjunction with a faster, more modern compressor, stacking those compressors in series with one another. But on this kind of record, you might be even more inclined to use an opto compressor as your primary compressor on elements like vocals, bass, maybe kick drum, maybe even acoustic guitar in some cases. Let's start hearing these first on vocals, which is one of the primary applications for opto compression. Listen for some of the extra grit and tone you're going to get out of the Acme Audio Opticom. The slightly smoother, cleaner, warmer feeling of the BX Opto and the cleanliness and flexibility of the Millennia TwinCom. In these audio examples, we're going to be pushing these things pretty far, listening to them on isolated tracks with significant amounts of compression, 10 to 12 dB or more of compression, so you can really get a sense for what they sound like and how they compare. Are you always going to use this much compression with these compressors? No. Oftentimes, 1, 2, 3 dB of compression is more than enough, but it is good to know what they sound like when you're pushing them hard, and that when you're pushing them hard, they can still sound great and give you totally usable sounds. Let's hear it first on vocals, which is one of the primary applications that people love optical compressors for. We'll hear each of them first, the Opticom, BX Opto, and Millennia, and then we'll hear them again with some slightly different settings. Mikey was the last of us to go 
He didn't need a super send-off show, he just waited until the lights went low and he slipped right off the track. Me, I'll make my exit soon, I can't roll smokes or hold a tune, but I'm waiting for that loon to come and bring me back. Cause even now I still believe Even though they had to leave They're waiting for me on the other side Of the great divide I keep on holding out until I get to see them smile I know they lose it when they see me cause it's been a while then we'll kick back around the fire and fight over who covers the bill. Because I brought them all to hell and yet they love me still. Mikey was the last of us to go. He didn't need a super send-off show. He just waited until the lights went low and he slipped right off the track. So I think you hear some real variety in tone there. A lot of character in each of these, especially the Opticom, and especially when we put it into the fast setting and really jack up the input gain. Each of them has a slightly different tonal color that I think you'll appreciate more and more as you play around with them for yourself. And even with lots of compression like we have here, they just sound a lot less boring with the compression on than off. In some of these heavier compression settings with slower attack times, you might want to couple them with a fast attack compressor or a de-esser to catch some of the S's and T's. But you'll notice that in the slow setting on the BX Opto, I turned the sidechain on to give us some sibilance reduction, even when we had a pretty slow attack time going on. Now let's hear it on acoustic guitars. One of the potential problems with Opto compressors on acoustic guitars is they can let through a little bit too much transient information and not give us all the smoothness and dynamic control we might like on really modern sounding records. That said, there's this cool retro old school vibe about conventional opto compressors on acoustic guitars some of the time, and you'll hear that in some fairly radical settings right now. But once we've heard each of these compressors in something closer to their default settings, we'll go ahead and switch over to some faster settings that aren't available on most optical compressors that allow us to get slightly smoother, chunkier, arguably more modern sounding acoustic guitar tones. Let's give them each a try, first in the basic attack and release settings, and then faster ones. Here we go.
So some interesting differences there that you'll hear more or less of depending on the quality of your playback system and how experienced you are at listening for differences in compression. But start playing around with these for yourself. Get a feel for how these interact with your acoustic guitars in real time, and I think you'll get a very clear sense of exactly what I'm talking about. Let's hear these compressors next on bass. Cool, so I think you'll hear some of the additional grit that these compressors are bringing out on the bass. That's especially pronounced when we get a little bit faster with the release times. But with those fast attack settings, and particularly when I use the sidechain on the BX Opto, we can get a much tighter bass sound in some of those faster settings as well. All right, I hope you enjoyed hearing these audio examples along with me, but of course the best way to hear them is to hear them for yourself on your own tracks in your own studio. Go over to plugin-alliance.com where you can try out these or anything else Plugin Alliance makes for free for two weeks. Or if you are a member of the Mega Subscription Bundle, these are just some tools that are already included in your Mega Subscription Bundle. When you do get around to trying them out, let us know in the comments down below. Which ones were your favorites? What kind of instruments did you like them on the most? And what kind of settings were you most inclined to use them in? Thanks for hanging out with me. This has been Justin Coletti of Sonic Scoop. See you next time.